there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, The Last Days of Europe, in which we will ex be exploring the events for Alexei II in TNO. So, we are currently a different nation, but let's go read about the Russian Empire. The tale of Alexei II is an odd one, born Michael Golanewski, a Polish immigrant to the USSR, a bureaucrat in the intelligence division of Yagoda's NKVD. Golanewski was just high up enough to learn some skills and make connections while still being irrelevant enough to avoid being killed by Taborsky's regime when Irkutsk fell. With the fall of the Regency and the communications to the government loss, Golanewski has styled his mustache, put on the most regal outfit he can find, and declared himself to be the Tsarevich returned to the citizens of Irkutsk. Swept into power by a popular rebellion, Alexei II has used his newfound authority in a mad gambit to save Russia, condemning the regent and ordering the end of the killing, which is totally false, just because we all know Alexei II is really alive, and this is totally him. Totally him, and here we are, my friends, with Alexei II. He's a despotist. But we have a few events we can talk through, go through, to see what would be available for him as a leader. Force of habit, many, many years ago, when he was still a young student, Michael Golanewski had once prepared for a stage play where he was to play a part of a Polish-Lithuanian nobleman, an effort that he had involved several hours backstage attempting to put on a gaudy, unwieldy costume for some reason. The memory drifted unwarranted to his mind as Stanislaw struggled to fit the undersized crown on his head. For God's sakes, Michael and Emperor, do not laugh like, someone pe like some sort of peasant. Sorry, man, but you, you have to see. Isn't there something about this that is hilarious? Pass me a cigarette at least, my legs hurt from standing for so long. Emperors don't smoke during their coronation either, and you might light one of those bloody robes on fire. We haven't got a single other royal looking thing for you to wear. Bloody? Is that any word for a royal retainer to say? Both men looked at each other for a second and then began laughing uncontrollably. Steny Slow looked at the cracked old antique he held in his hand and Michael glanced at the tattered edge of his royal robe and they realized what exactly Russia had been reduced to. In such a situation, man has only two choices, to laugh or to cry. And crying would have been seemed less kingly than a good chuckle. Alright, alright, we have to get this done with. People will be gathering outside by now and the coronation will be the only first step. Finally, some good will be done for the wretched lamb. Michael calmed himself down and tried to create an expression of deep imperial majesty on his face and failed. Even if it wasn't a very good ro royal gesture, at times like these, there was only one true solution. Give me some of that vodka, at least the wind's getting colder. Oh boy. And the national spirits we have are the pretender to the crown as well as a red Tsar. Very cool. And of course we do have Salted Earth. And honestly, technology divisions don't really matter too much, but none the wiser. The biting wind blew harshly through the crowd that had gathered in front of a small, worn down chapel to witness the coronation of Tsar Alexei II. The ceremony itself was short and muted, with no one left alive in Rakutsk who could play the organ. It was decided to forego music entirely to maintain a somber atmosphere. Once a new king had his crown placed on his head and finished reciting hymns and oaths long forgotten by his people, they watched with bated breath as he walked outside and in front of a small microphone began to speak. People of Russia, my loyal subject, it is with nothing more than the grace of God that I, Alexei Nikolaevich, have returned to my place as the star of all Russia to fulfill my God-given duty to restore order and please to our weary uh, nation. The wicked region could not stand against the infinite strength and compassion of the Almighty, and in this hour of gratitude I offer my humble thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for offering us a chance at salvation once more. In the days to come, I will make it to the first mission of my imperial government to carry out the Lord's work and restore to my loyal and ailing subjects the basic conditions that all humans need and deserve, and then to extend this to all citizens of Russia, no matter how far away or under what, de what depraved and illegitimate master they are forced to toil. When the crowd had dispersed, and Golanewski had finally had time to himself, he had reflected on his speech. Almost all of it had been devised in the spur of the moment, including the extreme rel religiosity. Ironic, coming from a communist and an atheist, though neither of these things seemed to matter very much, neither of them had saved Russia from what it had become, and if appealing to the opium of the masses was what it would take to bring back order to the shattered remains of the nation, then it would be done. What the people needed was not uh, Mr. Michael Golanewski, the Polish spy, but Tsar Alexei II, a people's emperor, acting with the blessing of God above. What they do not know will not hurt them. Also, if you'd like to check out how we got here uh, to this point with all the post happy warlords, I'll leave a link to the video in the description below where I live stream me playing as basically Taborski getting to this point.
the purgation. One of the Emperor's new programs had been restoring the radio loudspeakers in every town and village center, and getting Irkutsk radio broadcast facility back and running. So when citizens were told that a vital and important announcement would be made over the radio, a surprisingly large number of them were able to tune in after the royal fanfare and state anthem the star began. People of Russia everywhere. My imperial subjects know that your true Emperor Alexei II has been, by the grace of God Almighty, been returned to you. Know that all those who claim to be acting in my stead are nothing more than traitors to the state. The agents of evil whose sole aim and purpose is to take from them those with nothing to spare everything and, no and more. Know that Sergei Taborsky, the false regent and monster of the motherland, is long dead and burning in the fires of heck for his infinite crimes against the Russian people, as will every bandit now claiming the cursed title of regent for himself. In the name of God and in my holy duty as the Tsar and autocrat of all of Russia, I vow an oath to heaven I shall not rest until these monsters are wiped clean from our homeland, beginning with Andrei Diki and his gang of cutthroats and rapists. People of Russia, the hour of liberation is near at hand, and it will begin with the utter rout and destruction of the so-called regency. All across the scattered remains of Tabriski's regime in the Far East, the Tsar's thunderous message resonated through the air and filled the hearts of all those who heard it with an emotion Russia had not seen in far too long. Hope. All those but one as Andrei Diki wreathed and screamed with impotent rage as he heard the distorted but still powerful voice echo out of his radio. As visions of torture and public execution swam through his mind, those less, un less fortunate souls in the state that he ruled listened and prayed to God, some for the first time in their lives, hoping against hope that finally some justice would come to the frigid ways of, Ru of Russia and Siberia. Perhaps at long last, her prayers will no longer be in vain. Let us hope, my friends. And actually, we're improving our academic base, research facilities, as well as industrial equipment. Not too bad. As well as industrial expertise. Poverty's getting worse, but oh well. Words uttered in secret. One thing that had not run out of supply in the shattered remains of Russia was vodka, and as much as there was a plethora of shady establishments in every corner of Rakutsk that offered its weary inhabitants some alcoholic solace. In the corner of one such bar, a small gathering of men in old uniforms, markings too worn to distinguish to all but a few, discussed quietly the bizarre situation they found themselves in. I'm telling you, man, I worked with him. He was with us in NKVD unit in Poland before the war. No, 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 no. The first one. The Great Patriotic War. Polish. Of all things, now apparently the Tsar is a bloody Pole. He's telling the truth. I worked with him too. Some unpronounceable Polish name like Golanievsky or some such. Mikhail Golanievsky. I can't remember. Not very competent either. Just a paper pusher. Oh, after the others emptied their glasses, one man with a sunken, worn face piped up. Bah, pole or not, he can't be that inept. We actually have a bit of electricity, water, food. What more can you ask for? Outside here, it's much worse. You have no idea. For what he is, he's making a decent job of it, at least. As the vodka continued flowing, what had started as a whispered conspiracy devolved into an argument, as it usually did. Well, what are you going to do? Take up arms with your broken Mosin and fight for the bad word regent? Who cares if he has isn't actually the Tsar? It doesn't matter. He acts like more of a leader than the dudes who came before him. And we finally have some hope for once in our cursed lives. Maybe we'll even see the motherland united again in our lifetimes. What matters more, a man or what he represents? And we also have Social Democrats Pavel Lazarev. Lazarev. We have a Libertarian Socialist Boris Nikitin. As well as Authoritarian Socialist y y Yagoda. Okay. You know what I would love? Someday that there would be a sub-mod for this nation in which we can actually play as Alexei II. But, red and gold. By the old of his imperial majesty, the emperor and autocrat of all of the Russias, the imperial government has resolved to declare all industrial and commercial enterprises located in the Russian Empire with all their capital and property, whatever they may consist of, the property of the Russian Empire. To, de to, to declare the formal redistribution of this land to those who may best make use of it and those who already reside and derive sustenance and employment from working on it upon the principle of present ownership. The three, to formally amend the, to the constitution of the Russian Empire the following provision that each region of the empire shall be governed by the imperial government through the institution of the regional Soviets, and that this shall remain an inalienable and unalterable foundation of the state and constitution. Long, long live the emperor S. Namivog. After the initial brief period of baff bafflement, Oliver Kutsk was ablaze with talk and rumor about the recently announced imperial decree, which bore more than passing resemblance to the old Soviet decrees of decades past. While those who were genuine monarchists were deeply and initially confused, the Tsar's personal popularity and public image had ensured their undying loyalty. Surely, as Alexei worked with the sanction of God himself, questioning him was equivalent to both treachery and blasphemy. If these decrees resembled the old Soviet announcements, it was a coincidence, and nothing more. Meanwhile, in an old dingy bar in a dark corner of the city, a group of old comrades chuckled quietly to themselves as they heard the news. It seemed their once compatriot had not forgotten where he had come from in a bizarre way. 
he had found the, the way to the people's hearts, in a way that perhaps even Bukharin had failed to understand. Will this be the way forward for Russia? But unfortunately, my friends, that is all the content there is for the Russian Empire and Alexei currently, and we are currently at three for this video. Uh, if you try to use cons commands to unite everyone here, I don't believe that there is any sort of reunification event. Kind of sucks, but that's pretty much it for, here, for us here. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.